Hello. Good afternoon to our viewers in the UK. Uh, good evening to our viewers in India and eastwards and morning to our viewers in the US. Um, welcome to another session in our series of conversations, My Life, My Art. Today's is a very special session. One, because we are marking the end of the year with this event. Um, we are calling this Places and Memories. And we are very, very privileged to have Pramita Malik with us to talk about Shantiniketan, Tagore's school and university, where she had the good luck to, good fortune to, to have her education. Um, I think for most people, for all of us, as we look back our school days and our college university days, those are our formative years. And the it's not just the academics that we imbibe, but the values and our attitude towards life, the way we go about life later in our thinking, in our analysis, in our attitude towards other people. A lot of that gets determined by those early years. And Shantiniketan, this utopian place which Tagore created, one with his ideas of education, but also with the idea of bringing urban children to closer to nature, to the proximity of nature, to understand and value that relationship with our surroundings, our environment, uh, valuing uh, ideas that are so urgent issues today, ideas like climate change and global warming, uh, a lot of these ideas were already working in Tagore's mind when he did this, when he brought young children and created festivals and created events to bring them closer to the environment around them, to be aware of your surroundings, to be aware that it's our responsibility to protect our landscapes and our surroundings. So Shantiniketan started with this very beautiful idea of a uh, spot in nature, just the way that the ancient rishis and uh, had their ashrams. And we have descriptions of these in our mythology, in our epics, in the Ramayana and in the Mahabharata. Uh, but Shantiniketan that way has been such an intrinsic part of the Bengali identity that for the millions of Bengalis who are around the globe now, this place holds symbolic value. It holds memories of Tagore. It holds uh, uh, ideas about a certain way of looking at life. And it holds jewels uh, who have given us the best in Tagorean thinking and in the arts, in the music, in the dance, in performing arts, in visual arts, and of course, in literature. A lot of that flourished around this area. So we're going to talk about uh, the, the 50s, the late 50s, 60s, the time that uh, Pramita Di was there. Pramita Di is, has been for many decades the leading Rabindra Sangeet or Tagore music exponent uh, in Bengal. She is not only known within the country, she is known internationally. For many years, she has been traveling around um, from the US, very often here in the UK and in Europe. Uh, she's also lately gone to the Far East as far as Japan. And uh, she will talk about her experiences. But she's learned, She's, as I said, she's been blessed to have learned from some of the stalwarts, from people who had trained themselves with Tagore in his presence. And it's, it's a legacy that has continued because from the late 80s, she has been teaching and training hundreds of students. She has a wonderful school called uh, Boikali, and we are all part of that as well. Um, and, and as a teacher, she used to teach in school, and then she gave up her full-time teaching to music, to devote her time to music and to become the best in the field that she chose to be in. So we are really, really honored to have uh, you, Monidi, with us today. Um, it's it's also a better event, and you have been with us from our inception. You've been with us to guide us, to mentor us, to take us through uh, a lot of our productions, our early productions. Our focus has also largely been on Tagore and Tagorean thinking here in 
London. So we are very, very grateful and very delighted that you're here. And at the outside, I'd just, I'd just like to share with you uh, the good news that this year, Betak has won the award for cultural legacy in the UK. Uh, so it's the cultural legacy NPO award that we have received. Um, and I think a lot of it has to be shared with artists like you who have given us your time and your participation. So welcome. Congratulations, uh, Shongita. Uh, another feather in your cap, in and uh, it's <laughs> it's always a pleasure to talk to you and to collaborate and do things with Baitak. As you said, that uh, Baitak is almost like a second home, and uh, with other one or two groups in London, yeah, I never feel that I'm out of uh, Kolkata there, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Thank you very much for inviting me today. And uh, thank you, viewers, uh, those of you who are taking out your time to watch uh, and share my experiences as I, uh, you know, narrate my life in Shantiniketan. So my fortune was this, that uh, first of all, I always consider myself very unlucky that I was, I didn't see Tagore. I was born after maybe after after around ten years after after he passed away. So even though I didn't uh, see him in person, but the Shantiri Ketan where I was born and where I was growing up, that had the flavor that had the uh, essence of Tagore and the spirit of Tagore was everywhere. So we, at that time, we've always felt that Tagore was there. And I wouldn't say that we felt uh, we were very conscious about this. It was as if we took it for granted that the Gurudev was there, Gurudev's sp spirit was there. That was ashram. And till now, I call it ashram. Mm. In our childhood, we used to call it ashram, and uh, that has stayed. So I spent nearly two decades of my life there, little less than that. And as you had very rightly said, that my formative years were spent in Shantiniketan. So whatever I, I am today, whatever value I may carry, that was imbibed uh, there in Shantiniketan. And uh, it's always a pleasure to talk about my younger days, my childhood, how we grew up, how what the life, what our lives were like, and uh, one thing I before I say anything, uh, I was just going through Rabindranath's uh, Jivan Sriti, my reminiscences. There he has mentioned that the Gayatri mantra that he was that he had to memorize during his threading ceremony, and he mentions the word. Uh, Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha. Mm -hmm. These three things, Bhu, Earth, Bhuva, Heavens, and Swaha, the middle part connecting uh, the Earth and the uh, Heavens, that appealed to him and that helped him to broaden his mind. And that stayed with him throughout his life. And that is, I think, one thing which has... Uh, influenced me the most to not to restrict yourself but to have a very open mind to uh, widen your horizons to be able to accept and adapt mm -hmm. so that is very very important to me so now tell me what you want want me to say now that's something very striking that you mentioned this because uh, for anyone who has discovered to God through his writings or through his music. It's always that idea of placing the human being, not in isolation or not even just no, in human no. society, but always in relationship Absolutely. to a larger space. And yeah. it could be nature, it could be the cosmos, it could be, Absolutely. you know, that idea of a grand universe and many planets. And I'm just there. a part in that uh, yeah. grand scheme of thing. Yes. Akash Parashudjo Tarat. 
পেয়েছি মোর স্থান ওয়ান্ডার ইন ইউর লাইফ in order to broaden your horizon in order to learn in order to grow because once you know, once you think that i know everything this is my limit then you don't grow anymore yeah very true and when when we get caught up in our you know in our individual lives and every day comes mm-hmm. with its bunches of problems and yes. good things and bad things then then in many ways your your mind shrinks and i often feel this that if i'm not talking to other people if i'm not having conversations which take me beyond this domesticity and and everyday everyday ideas then that they seem you feel a bit cheated that day as if something absolutely and that is what had happened the last nearly 2 years yes for many of us it, it's been people. very very restrictive at least for me yes and you as an artist who who's constantly traveling and touring and <laughs> meeting people it's it's a uh, yeah must have given you withdrawal symptoms absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's come to our questions and uh, just just to tell you and you know this as much as we do that our audience is not necessarily only the bengali speaking audience we have yes. a large audience and it would be really nice to give them these in in broad shades this idea of uh, shantiniketan and education what brought tagore back from kolkata to this place is it a dream that he had nurtured for a very long time that he would create an educational institution it was there in his mind because first of all we have to remember that his school days were very unhappy mm. he hated going to school and he hated the, the that the restrictive four walls where he couldn't see where he couldn't uh feel you know feel nature see nature be with nature and uh, that he just could not could never get adjusted to and as a result when he went to shilai daho with his family in um, in the it's, it's, it's 1891 or so to take up the work of their zamindari he decided when he had very small children he decided not to send them to school but to teach them himself in his own way and that also i would say uh gave him his you know that his idea was already there germinating and then he decided to give it shape and because the shantiniketan uh, that place that plot of land was already there he decided in 1901 to come come to shantiniketan from shilaidaho and start an uh, uh, the uh, the brahmacharyashram as we call it later on it it was it came to be um, uh, known as patbhavan he started with five uh, boys and uh, among them was his uh, um, elder son rothindranath tagore so and we all know that he had to sell off his wife's jewelry to or run the school but that is how it started and he was also lucky to have found many devoted many dedicated teachers who were there gradually pe- uh, children started coming not children only boys to begin with and he in his uh, writing about uh, the open air school in in one of his essays he also mentions that a child has a great affinity with nature a child has to uh, live and grow and develop in harmony with nature then only the growth can be a holistic 
a, a, a growth and he can become a true uh, human being mm -hmm. so he wanted them when he reached uh, shantiniketan it was more or less a barren land only uh, lal mati and kokhoi and then gradually it became green and he used to he and his family of course they uh, planted many trees and the green that we see today when devendranath tagore had gone there in the uh, 1860s at that time uh, there was hardly any any trees or anything only those uh, chatim trees there mm -hmm. so he almost i would say created nature also he created the greenery mm -hmm. and the boys who grew up they grew their own garden they were made to water take care of the plants and gradually oh. very gradually but very steadily the greenery grew yeah and then of course obviously the start cannot you know when he started it there were many glitches and he had to face many difficulties but he overcame them and uh, gradually the brahmachodya ashram came into being a proper school and uh, i was just going through a very uh, funny uh, story i don't know whether you'll be interested to hear that an anecdote about uh, the way tigor looked at education this was written by pramothona dvishi a very very famous writer and uh, literature so uh, he writes uh, pramothona dvishi writes that when he joined brahmachodya ashram he was very good in literature and he could also write poems but as far as maths concerned maths was concerned he was hopeless so once you know his teacher one nagendranath aich he had uh, he was testing them given them a lot of uh, sums and uh, he could finish the entire paper very easily and according to him he would have got 120 out of 100 and he was elated and he was wondering how his teacher would give him 120 on yeah, 100 because they were supposed to do 100 marks mm. answer and he had answered 120 marks questions anyway so i it, it probably you like uh, to hear this what he wrote so after uh, he got back his paper the he asked uh, his teacher that sir how much have i got my marks because looking at the teacher's face he could understand that he was very angry so he said mm. that uh, you are angry my sums are all wrong so he said yes not only wrong not even one is correct but why did you have to write a poem <laughs> and then he uh, took that poem to uh, rovindranath so the poem was like this हे होरी हे दयामय किछु मार्क दियो आमाय ओ गॉड ग्रांट मी सम मार्क्स तुमार शरणागत नोही सतत शुद्ध ए परीक्षा समय आई नेवर थिंक ऑफ यू आई नेवर रिमेंबर यू ओनली ड्यूरिंग माय एग्जामिनेशन टाइम सो व्हेन रविंद्रनाथ सॉ दिस एंड द नगिन आईच इज द मास्टर द मैथ्स मास्टर he thought that rovindranath would also get angry and reprimand pramothobishi so gurudev went through that uh, paper and then said uh nogin yeah the sums are they are all wrong i have to grant you that but you have to say you have to admit that the poem is quite nice it's so simple and straight from his heart so uh, don't be very harsh with him so that was tagore as a uh, teacher so i thought that uh, that would give you some idea as to how he treated his children mm -hmm. the children of his school yeah also for those of you who don't know uh, uh, the, the young kids would uh, have outdoor classes so so they were not really in in classrooms they would be sitting in the gardens and and learning with their teachers and as you said this concept of ashram and outdoor education is already there in our ancient civilization also yes. in the 19th century in europe there was a lot of experimentation and theorists mm -hmm. and rousseau was also talking about this idea that a child will have 
only full development if he grows up within the lap of nature. So yeah. that's there were uh, funny incidents also. Suppose we were doing a class. But we used to have other classes uh, under a tree, sometimes not even a tree, just on the kakor, the uh, pebbles. We would spread our little mats, ashon we used to call them. And suddenly there was a sudden thud. Tal pudeche, tal pudeche. So the tal palm had dropped from some uh, tal tree and we would all rush there. And once I remember that we were doing a nature study class or maybe Bengali class. Our teacher was Sri Tejesh Chandrasen. Tejeshda got so angry that he immediately, you know, sub, you know, hit the boy who, who had run there to get the tal and one or two and said that, Badur, what is this? Why did you have to run out of the uh, class? I would have got you the tal in any case. But we all knew that, that, that his anger was short-lived. And very soon, you know, by evening time, we all got Talir Bora. He made uh, Talir Bora for us. So okay. that was the relation. I was very small. I, I was either in class three or four at that time. But I remember that incident. Mm. That apparently was very angry. But then we, he called us to have Talir Bora later on. <laughs> so this discipline that you're talking about is, is something that was not enforced on the children. And, and there was not a really not in that way, but mm. somehow, uh, you know, there's a story. I mean, it is very uh, common to say that Shantini Ketan students they will say, Ai Goru Shorna, that mm. kind of bhadrata, that kind of courteousness. But from our childhood, we had learned to become courteous. It was not really enforced. It was not an outer discipline, which was kind of, we had to swallow that. No, not like that. We learned from our seniors, from our teachers, how they, they respected us. And we could never think of disrespect, showing, showing disrespect to them. So that was mutual. Hmm. So I remember that... Uh, then I, I, at that time, I was about uh, maybe in class 10 or something. And I had special Bengali and we were doing Meghnad Bhat Kabbu. And uh, I, I was finding it very difficult to do the explanation. And that particularly Michael Modushudan's language was quite difficult. So uh, our Bengali teacher, Umadi, she said that do one thing. You have your lunch and come to my place. I will sit with you and I'll teach you separately. Mind you, that that was no private tuition. Yeah. She was just helping me out. And not only that, the, the lesson would always end with a bowl of trifle pudding or paish or something. So I had, uh, you know, <laughs> there would be double attraction, not only to uh, learn, but to eat also. So even I've seen my mother, who was an English teacher there, that during... Uh, you know, immediately after our lunch at home, she would rush to one of the hostels to uh, help some of the weaker children to um, overcome whatever their weakness was. Mm. So the uh, relation was such that the teacher and the student, we never, we never thought of even uh, disrespecting or disobeying them. But we were very frank with them we would discuss our problems if there was any. Hmm. So uh, that was the kind of, of course, there were naughty children who were very, very naughty. So they had to be reprimanded, but I was never that naughty. So, but obviously, you know, childhood pranks and uh, uh, those things would be there, teasing classmates or being teased. That was all there. And the teachers were also equally, they were very uh, casual about that. Mm -hmm. So you said that the school started with the boys. When did the girls yes. start coming in? Girls had started coming uh, around, say, around uh, the um, 1910, 13, around that time. But uh, there was so much of uh, criticism that he had to stop it. Rabindranath had to stall it for the time being. Then early 20s, of course, why early 20s? Late uh, 17, 18, 19, 
around that time the girls started uh, you know in full fledged they started coming in so uh, the winning of the nobel prize obviously must have also that that was it. yes 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 so, uh, that was a great thing yes yeah. but a lot of that changed afterwards and even Absolutely. when he won the nobel yes. prize that famous story mm. that uh, he says that okay now there's money for the plumbing so the drain. Hotels, yeah to do for the drain yes <laughs> yeah yeah so when the girls Actually, came in, sorry sorry out, uh, yeah sorry no tell me Uh, no, actually, you know, uh, when I joined uh, Anandu Patshala, which is the kindergarten, that I was about three at that time. So I was there for about three years, and then I joined Patwabun in 1959 in class two, mm -hmm. and uh, that. I, what i remember even now is that the classes were not very big we wouldn't have more than 20 children in a section so it would always be easier for the teachers to manage us mm. to teach properly to help us in whatever we needed because mm. in a big class it is because i've taught in a very big school in um, uh, calcutta and i always found it extremely uh, difficult to have that you know one to one contact which mm -hmm. is very uh, necessary for a child's growth mm -hmm. the teacher has to know his or her pupil individually mm -hmm. their problems at home what they are uh, what they like what they don't like all kinds of stories you know children come up with so mm -hmm. the a teacher has to have that time now in a class of 50 how will that in, in a class uh, of 50 and the time say 40 minutes how can you interact one to one it's just not possible yeah but in shantiniketan teachers could do that mm -hmm. and then because it was residential though we were day scholars because our parents uh, were uh, in service in bishwabharti so we were day scholars but otherwise mostly they were uh, all uh, boarders and uh, uh, because they the, the number was so small it was always easy for a teacher to look after them to um, sort out their problems and you know in in general take care of them mm -hmm. so the way uh, uh, ravindranath introduced the performing arts really so introduced music hmm. introduced dance introduced painting um uh, it, it of course led to some very enduring craft and textile work in shantiniketan and i can see you're wearing that beautiful batik sari which is <laughs> yeah. made by by the crafts people in shantiniketan i also pulled out my katha which is from shantiniketan so shantiniketan <laughs> is known even till today uh, for for its yes. music crafts so with all all these core co curricular or extra curricular activities they were integrated in the education system absolutely right? because these were compulsory needlework we we learned to do batik then bandhni the tie and dye and the stitches needlework was there and on top of that batik and bandhni and then we had uh, clay modeling classes and uh, of course drawing and painting was obviously there yeah. singing dancing those were all not elective subjects but compulsory subjects not only that when i was very young say until i think i was in class 5 or something we used to go to shriniketan to learn the other uh, uh, subjects like say book binding paper making then weaving so these were the things that we uh, had to learn once a week we had these classes for yeah. which we were taken to sriniketan by a bus and we had uh, those classes and then came back and sriniketan so was uh, set up by elmhurst uh, elmhurst mm -hmm. came much later uh, sriniketan was uh, actually i would say the first uh, person who was in charge of sriniketan the rural institute was kali mohan ghosh father of uh, shantidev ghosh uh -huh. he was the first one 
who helped uh, uh, Tagore in uh, building Sriniketan and the Rural Institute to be in touch with the farmers and the rural people nearby because that was Tagore's aim. Yes. And for that reason, actually, he had sent Rothindranath uh, and uh, Shantosh Chandra Mojumdar to Illinois to learn all these to to learn to study agriculture so that they could come back and help the farmers to learn a better way, way of farming he thought that urban life because after all ours ours especially in those days it was an agrarian society mm. and agriculture must flourish and more and more people were turning to cities leaving villages and Tagore felt that uh, there was nobody to teach the illiterate farmers and the rural people. I'm, you have to understand I'm talking about the beginning of the 20th century. So at that time, he felt the need of people who would stay and, you know, interact with the farmers and with the uh, village people and teach them the way to do farming in a modern way teach them about seeds and everything. Mm -hmm. So that, that with that idea, he had uh, started Shriniketan. And Elmhurst, of course, he played a huge part, but he came much later. But mm -hmm. without Elmhurst, of course, one cannot imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, Elmhurst came in the 20s. Yes. And uh, Kalimun Ghosh was, came before that. And he was also uh, very, uh, I've, read that Kalimhun uh, Ghosh was very friendly with the farmers and uh, with the rural people. He could mix with them, uh, uh, you know, just like their own. Right, right. So yes, this uh, upliftment and development of the local community, of the local indigenous people, yeah. that, uh, you know, we talk so much about these ideas now, but it's it's amazing how at the turn of the century, Tagore was Absolutely. Already... And mm. I remember when, uh, I remember, I, I can't, cannot exactly give you the year, but uh, we had, uh, we have Sriniketan Nirmala after Poshmala. The Poshmala, which is so famous in Shantiniketan in December, which starts, you know, around the 23rd of December. So more or less one month later, there is another mala, another fair, which helps. It, it's more a rural kind of fair that uh, was that used to be held in Sriniketan. I know I haven't visited it for the last 50, 52 years. I, I don't know if the nature has changed. But in mm -hmm. our days, mm -hmm. it was like a rural mala. And uh, I remember that many farmers would come with their huge pumpkins, huge, uh, the, you know, all kinds of uh, cabbages, cauliflowers, such big cauliflowers, and whatever they were growing, you know, they would bring it and uh, they would get prizes for uh, the best vegetable like that. You know, there were not really competitions, but uh, just to kind of encourage them, it was there. Mm. So Sriniketa Nirmala was, uh, again, something different, not exactly like Poshmala. Poshmala had a more sophisticated nature. Now, mm. I th I, I'm not very sure about what the Srinikata Nirmala is like, but in our days, it was very, very different, but very nice. That's great. I also want you to talk a bit about the, um, as I said, bring it back to performing arts because that is what you, which was part of your training and which you took up professionally later. So when uh, Tagore, I imagine, wrote most of his songs in Shantiniketan, and yes. he gives us all the Ritu uh, songs, the the nature and the cycle of nature, the the season mm -hmm. songs, and did that help you all to to really sort of celebrate and understand? the cycle of nature, how summer moves into monsoons and the monsoons moves into yes. the clear autumn skies. And did you have celebrations and festivals for each season? Uh, for summer, we didn't have... Uh, actually, in summer, the only festival we had was Rabindranath's birthday. Uh -huh. And uh, probably you know that uh, in those days, even when in our uh, childhood days, uh, Robindranath's birthday is actually on Pochishe Boishak, which is 8th or 7th or 8th or 9th of May. Mm -hmm. 
the school and the university was closed on 1st of may for two months so from 1936 onwards the uh, birth anniversary like uh, robindra janmut shop used to be celebrated on the 1st of boishak poila boishak okay and pochishe boishak was a very small affair because very few people lived in that's because of water scarcity oh okay. so the practical reason mm-hmm. for uh, shifting the uh, the 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 celebration to uh, poila boishak okay. so so that was probably the only uh, festival in uh, summer but after the summer holidays there because the monsoons would come after that so there there were so many festivals brikkhoropon holokarshon borsha mongol then uh, rovindra saptaho so one after the other which would final uh, you know finally uh, culminate in sharodot shop which is the autumn before the uh, the university closed for the uh, for the puja the, yeah, the autumn uh, recess yes and then ba- after we came back then again you know for convocation for poush mela and things like that and then after poush mela there were other small functions like morshi's birthday the uh, agarwi mag magotshab etc uh, the republic day and another very big festival is the spring festival spring but ju- just now you were talking about the uh, the, the season of the festivals of uh, re- uh, regarding the festivals revolving around the seasons yeah. one thing i probably very few people know that ritu utshab was st- not started by tagore as such in shantiniketan it was mm. started by his younger son shomindranath in mm. 1907 mm. he started ritu utshab and that the first ritu utshab was held on boshonto panchomi that which is normally near uh, you know around saraswati puja time mm. so he had his classmates uh, you know dressed as uh, summer as monsoon as shor- uh, autumn as win- at winter spring and then they uh, read out uh, they took their teachers help to read out a uh, mantras from the vedas and then he had sung eki labonne purno prano in one of his writings i'm forgetting which book tagore had also you know very uh, humorously had said that he had sung it but probably not in tune <laughs> so uh, and uh, you know we all know that the same year this happened in january and same year november shomendranath hmm. left us he died so uh, that before he died actually this the very idea that shobindranath had done this in shantiniketan that made tagore think about you know introducing these ritu utsavs on a regular basis mm-hmm. so that is how it came uh, to be in shantiniketan and another thing the fest you know writing songs and having festivals and particularly plays he has written in his poet school that he found that just to teach uh, the boys some songs don't interest them so much they would rather climb a tree and go in search for looking for uh, green mangoes or something like that but when you tell them that the song is being taught because they will all take part in a play yeah. or a festival that would immediately interest them more and that would bring them back to their singing class music class whatever and that is very very true because i don't teach children i teach adults but i've seen that uh, they take it, of course they do take interest in class but whenever there's a program immediately the that uh, interest increases level. immediately that that level of interest in, increases so that's very very true mm. and another thing very uh, i find that quite amusing and interesting is the fact that uh, shantideep ghosh you know being the son of kalimohan ghosh he grew up in shantiniketan he has written that uh, when they were learning you know 
taking part in various plays, Rabindranath would teach them uh, choreographed movements oh. himself. And those movements were essentially Western. So okay. first of all, if, if somebody tells you that Rabindranath, he taught us how to dance, we would all kind of think that what's wrong with that person. But no, we have to remember what he taught. Hmm. He taught them some uh, choreographed movements to go with the songs. And where did he learn? He learned in Europe. He learned in uh, England when he was there as a teenager. Because we know that he had attended many balls there. Hmm. And he was... Uh, good dance. Uh, yeah. 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 Dance. So, good dance uh, and singer. Yeah, and of course he was a singer, and then uh, gradually he introduced, brought uh, uh, dance teachers to teach them proper songs, uh, proper dancing. And after the girls came to Shantiniketan, there were other teachers also, uh, Bharatnatyam teachers. Manipuri was always his favorite. He always yes. thought that Manipuri style uh, was the most appropriate with his uh, songs. But one thing we have to remember that he never believed that the Nritta Mudras, pure, pure Nritta, that, is, that was not uh, really appropriate with his songs. With his songs he thought yeah. that he had to do something which would go with his songs, which would express his songs better. Hmm. So in one of Rama Chakraborty's uh, reminiscences, Ramadi wrote that uh, when Tagore had become quite, uh, you know, quite old, and he was uh, there was a rehearsal of Shap Muchun going on, and somebody who was the the uh, dancing Shoki uh, Shoki Akela Ghore was probably you know doing a lot of dance steps and uh, many gestures and mudras and he immediately stopped it and said that no this is not the way you do it and he he could not stand up and show the person how to dance but sitting there the the portion jano karbani kubhu kanyane kubhu anena he said how to uh, you know as if somebody's uh, sending message to you, you are trying to hear it, and you are eagerly going to, to one part of the stage, and then kovu anena, but then you miss it, you don't hear it anymore, and you sit down there, broken hearted, on the mm. stage. Mm. So that is how you would ha have to express. You won't do any kind of dance steps with that. Right. So so he was very absolute. You know, he also watched the steps that were being taught. We all know that he had uh, sent Shanti Dev Ghosh to uh, Sri Lanka to learn uh, Kandy, and then to uh, Bali and Java, and of course there were the, the other classical dance forms of India, ballet also. So yeah. uh, then uh, Garba from your uh, from Gujarat. Right. So. It was a, there is nothing called Rabindrit Nritya as such, because there, there's no Swaralipi notation for those Nrityas. Mm -hmm. So that, we have to remember that it's it's better, I always feel that it is better to call it the uh, dance of the Shantiriketan Gharana, Shantiriketan school of dancing, mm -hmm. where the dance would cater to the, uh, the particularly if you are dancing to a, a song written by Rabindranath, then that has to be able to express what has been said in the song, not not to show your prowess as a dancer. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and when we learned, of course, we learned in a group. And another, I have to um, tell you the I learned in school because I couldn't, I didn't do Shongit Bhavan. I came back to, I not came back. We moved to Kolkata. Uh, in 1969-70. So I had done a little bit of certificate course from Shongit Bhavan in Rabindu Shongit. And, but from my childhood, I've been singing. I've, I used to, we had a compulsory music in school. And of course, 
we had teachers like uh, in school we had teachers like Munju Banerji and uh, Aruti Bosh and Biren Palit, Shitang Shuroy later on. But we also had the opportunity of learning from Kunika Bantupadhyay, from Nili Mashen, from Shanti Dev Ghosh. Shanti Dev Ghosh, of course, uh, was our teacher when we were doing our certificate course in. Uh, Shongit Bhagun. But before that, in school, some of us were always uh, selected to take part in various uh, dance dramas and other programs. So he would always teach us. And, you know, for anything, like even a small uh, performance, we would run to Mohor Mashi to Konika Bantopadha's house and say, Mohor Mashi, I want to sing this song. Please teach me. Or to Nili Mashen's house and say, Bakshu Mashi, please ekanta shikheda. So it was that kind of relationship. And mm-hmm. no, not, uh, you know, thinking, oh my God, I'm, how it's, um, what kind of audacity asking Kunika Bandhubadha to teach me a song. So it was not like that. It was just like a huge uh, joint family, yeah. I would say. Yeah. yeah. So because you'll be, uh, <laughs> probably this will make you laugh. You know, we had a huge Kathalgach, jackfruit tree, mm. and which would bear, which would completely bend with uh, fruits. And uh, my parents were not very fond of uh, jackfruits, and my uh, but those jackfruits were very good, very sweet, very juicy. And my uh, grandmother would ask me to, uh, you know, open it, you know, take out those uh, pulps and what do you call it? I don't know, kathalirkoa, and to to distribute them to our neighbors and to different friends' houses. So that was quite common. And sub- another thing I have forgotten to mention is that we had uh, university sports. Yes, yes. For yes. three days. It was uh, it attended by everyone. Mm. And uh, my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, she would go with huge baskets of whatever was available at that time in our garden it may be guava, it may be, because in it used to be held in winter in our times. And so probably guava, otherwise cool, different kinds of cool. Uh, topa berries. cool or narcoli cool, what, yeah, berries. So, uh, so people would just come, mashima nichi, and they would take, and kamranga sometimes. So that was the life that I led. Morning, Early morning, say at I'm just just a, an ordinary morning. I would get up early in the morning. My uh, grandmother at one time we had early morning physical training, so by five I would just uh, you know ride my bike, go to uh, Kalarmat, the playground, have the physical exercise, come back. We used to call it PT, physical training. Come back home, change. Then the bell started ringing, run to Boitalik. And after Boitalik, in Boitalik, we would all chant Ong Pitano Si Pitano Bodhi. And in our respected, the, the places were, the lines were all there, you know, for Patrababon, for Shikha Babon, Bidda Babon, and things like that. And after that, the classes bell. And two after two periods, we have, would have a small, very short recess. When at one time, the school used to give us uh, little tiffins like uh, bread and banana and egg. Those who didn't take egg, they would get rasgullas. And then uh, after that, again, two periods. No, a- again, two or three periods. I'm forgetting. Which. Then I would come. I'm talking about the um, summer, summer routines. Then we would be back home by, say, it, quarter to 11, 11. Mm-hmm. And have a, uh, we'll take a shower have our lunch and do a, a, our homework, if any, then again go back to school around 3. 3 to 5 would be the afternoon session. Then after that, again come back home, change, and go for a, a games period, which was again compulsory. Okay. And after games, very often I had to go to Shungit Bhabun for some kind of rehearsal. Mm-hmm. If I've, the photographs, probably you will show them. You will see that uh, uh, as a small child also, I have acted with uh, uh, people who were really be, uh, much, much older in Shongit Bhavon or in other things. And always uh, Shantidev Ghosh, um, 
konika bantopadhyay later on nilima shen they were always there and another thing you know we we would never leave the rehearsal in the middle suppose i had in one program i have just one song like not not, not solo song chorus even then we were it was we knew that we had to wait till the entire thing was over so right. as a result what happened within a week the in, we learned the whole thing by heart oh right so that was a way of teaching us the dance drama yeah. and i have learned the dance dramas like that wow. dance dramas and the musical plays like that so uh, and another thing uh, i have to tell you about this is more uh, to about rubindranath's education and understanding of children we had a students parliament called ashram shomiloni with various departments like khaddo vibhag khaddo vibhag would look after the food what kind of food they were getting then shiba vibhag service hmm. like they would uh, visit uh, the villages and uh, collect clothes money some uh, food grains distribute there then uh, uh, shahitya vibhag we mm-hmm. would have uh, shahitya shobhas the literary meets every monday in school right. and then krira vibhag the mm-hmm. games mm-hmm. department games and there would be two pe- uh, uh, students in charge of that but and, and also bichar vibhag suppose What? somebody has had yes suppose somebody had re- com- committed a very very serious uh something which should never have done so immediately before rusticating that person there would be a bichar shobha in which the the representatives i was <laughs> once a representative of bichar shobha so they will decide what is to be done with the student with the culprit and of course the teachers would be there if they thought that the punishment was tri- not uh, serious enough they would intervene otherwise they will let it go by so what i'm saying is that rubindranath thought of making children self sufficient and responsible from a very early age even mm-hmm. the anandu bazar that we had there uh, the accounts you have a s- small fair where you uh sell uh, food and uh, whatever craft things that you make etc and whatever money you collect you give that to you just keep the money that you have spent and the, give the rest for charity to shiba vibhag so that means even small children are learning to keep accounts hmm so these were some of the very very uh novel things which in those days Uh, i don't think would be noticed anywhere else in any other school yeah no well, this sounds fascinating also yeah. uh, you know uh, i think at the core of all this is uh, that spirit of of quest of wanting to learn more and also tagore yeah. himself who so fearlessly stood for freedom of speech all his absolutely. life absolutely absolutely wonderful place and another thing shongita you know he his spirit i would say i shouldn't say he his spirit or the spirit of shantini ketan had instilled a fierce positivity in within us hmm. because you know i strongly believe as you know me very well i have gone through many ups and downs health health or otherwise but these lines that monere aaj kaho je ভালো মন্দ যাহাই আসুক সত্যের ল সহজে কাম ওয়াট মে গুড অর ব্যাড লার্ন টু অ্যাকসেপ্ট ট্রুথ সো দ্যাট ইজ দ্যাট অলওয়েজ কিপস মাই স্পিরিট হাই অ্যান্ড আই ডোন্ট থিঙ্ক আই উড হ্যাভ ইউ নো গট দিস স্পিরিট এনি ওয়ের এলস উইথ শান্তি নিকেতন হ্যাজ গিভেন মি অ্যান্ড টু বি হ্যাপি অ্যাট ভেরি স্মল থিংস এক্স্যাক্টলি 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 and also relationships you know because i've seen you go back uh, every winter during posh mala and old ashramites also come and then you'll do that walk um, after yes. the christmas that very special christmas uh, yeah. festival and prayers that happens in the mandir 
which as we were saying the other day, probably uh, there's no other school where uh, no. in specifically this very beautiful prayer mm -hmm. service for for uh, Christ, Christ in a non-Christian yeah. place, in a, in a secular yeah. place. And not only school, it's a university, it's a formal university program, university function. And when they light up the candles and the, the songs are sung, it's it's just such yeah. a beautiful memory that even I hold very strongly through the whole year. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we'd like to show those photos. And we've talked so much, Monidhi, but we haven't asked you to sing. So what's what's the favorite <laughs> song that you would like to sing? I know there is a particular Shanti Niketan song as well. But at this moment, whichever song you want to sing. Okay. You know, I, I have I have already taken a class and then I've been talking so much. Talking so it, it talk, wouldn't yeah. it wouldn't be a very good uh, performance. Well, our audiences are I just try a little little often. bit. It's it's just delightful to hear you. <laughs> I'm singing the last part. Captures the essence of yes, what absolutely. you've loved all your life and what you continue to love. It's very, yes. very beautiful. Shuranjan, shall we see the uh, photographs? Uh, I'd like to show all of you some photographs which uh, are from Monidi's own album. That's uh, this, a very young <laughs> This is a Bengali version of Red Riding Hood when I was in Shantiniketan, <laughs> barely three and a half. So I was the mother and my friend Maya. Uh, she she was a little Red Riding Hood. The taller one is me. This is, you know, this one is uh, the Vishwabharati team going for a uh, uh, youth festival in Delhi. And the front row, you can see Shanti Dev Ghosh. And next to him, my mother. And uh, just go to the top. You'll find that I'm I'm sitting or crouching on, squatting on somebody's uh, shoulder. Well that is my Pisha Moshai, my uncle, uh, Shubhomoy Ghosh, the youngest uh, brother of Shantidev Ghosh. And again, next to him was my own, uh, my kakun, my uncle, Bishojit Rai. Uh, 
Hmm. And uh, in front of me is my kakima, Joy Sri Rai. And there is this Shupriyo Tagore in this. There are many people. It's very difficult to, you know, point out. But this is how even uh, my mother was uh, going with the, with the group. And I, I was too uh, young to be left alone. So I was taken happily with the group, you know. Yes, you come from this great family of women educationists. For for those yeah. who don't know out there, uh, uh, your mother, your aunts, all of them have taught Absolutely. women in education all their lives. There's oh, your there, Asaka and Singe. This is Srinigetan in Mala, actually. Okay. So this Kasugai family had uh, were there in Shantiniketan for some time, for a quite a few years and uh, this is with my paternal grandmother Sneholata Rai and uh, next to her is Kinko Di. We used to call her Kinko Di, Kinko Kasugai who used to teach us origami and uh, Singe and Asaka were our friends. Asaka was my classmate, same class, same section and Singe uh, a couple of years senior. They were very good in studies and they wrote Bengali so well. Their compositions, they were appreciated by one and all. And we used to wonder, and when we were young, we always said that Asakar Muton Hutahabe. I have to be like Asaka. Oh. So, um, you know, when I went to Japan in 2016, I had uh, asked many people if they knew their whereabouts, but uh, nobody could kind of, probably they have uh, emigrated they are not there anymore or they have gone some uh, settled down somewhere else in Canada or something. Mm. Okay. Yeah, very good friends. This is a, a, a scene, you know, this is Lokhir Purikha, another Tagore's play. Here, uh, this was directed by my uh, grandmother, my Takuma, who is sitting r right in the middle. And I was a little bride, but I think it was the it was being the the photograph was being taken later on by that time either the sari had come off or i you know i couldn't wear it anymore because i had to wear heavy jewelry and everything so that was taken off that's why i'm in a frock with the others okay. this is uh, i'm not here but uh, one of my friends is this is brikkhoropon the five elements in brikkhoropon khiti optej morut bom uh, the earth, the uh, op is uh, water, tej is fire, uh, morut is uh, wind, and uh, boom is the sky or the firmament. So they would be, little children would be, would be dressed up as one of the elements and they would be invoked by Tego's uh, uh, poems and a little sapling would be planted. It's a very, one of the major festivals of Chantiriketa. Break it's, open, yes. We talk of tree planting now, and every child is yes. encouraged to to plant trees. It's it's incredible. Absolutely, this is a uh, you know uh, after Boshantot shop there would be little 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 groups where uh, you know people just uh, old ashramites they would just sit sit around some a place and they would sing spring songs. So that's uh, that's that. This is a uh, Boshantut shop, and I would especially like to point out that the person who is uh, the gentleman who is playing the Esraj right behind me, these are my friends Mahashita and Rita. Uh, three, we had a um, song, we sang a song for a formal Boshantut shop program, and that Esraj is being played by Oshish Banerjee. And now I think how when I think about that, I now I realize how fortunate we were mm -hmm. that a maestro of Oshishta's caliber would play with with yes, us. Mm -hmm. Little but like uh, school girls, he would play with us, accompany us. I mean, now I just can't imagine that. Mm. So that's a Bashantutsha program. This is, you know, we had uh, won some prizes. I, I am sitting right in uh, in front, you know, I'm sitting kneeling down there. And uh, you can see that the prizes were given out by none other than Professor Acharya Satyan Bose. So uh, yeah. this is again, it will tell you that 
what the what our life was like it was very simple and we didn't really understand who was who mm. we never thought it never occurred to us that he was such a great personality he was of course at one time the vice chancellor of bishop bharati sitting in this picture sitting next to him is kalidash bhattacharya who was uh, the vice chancellor in uh, in around 68 or 69 so uh, we never bothered about these things as i was telling you that they, that when when leonard elmhurst had come to our house uh, you know i i didn't i was felt i felt rather shy to approach him for an autograph because i couldn't speak english at all and uh, finally when i gathered up enough, enough courage to approach him he gave me an autograph and he wrote elmhurst and then he wrote chasha underneath mm. he called himself chasha Sure. So these are my friends. Some of us who uh, won the prizes, and this is just a picture of the mandir. Inside, some uh, gathering is happening, and the next one, the right one, is when Indira Gandhi was the cha cha chancellor of Shanti Niketan. He, she would be. Uh, at, this is the convocation, university convocation. She would uh, give out the the di degrees, the certificates, and di diplomas. And with the saptaparni leaves, so just a picture of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had uh, in during Poush Mela. Then by then, of course, I had left Shanti Niketan, but we used to uh, have a cop. We used to, uh, you know, um, we used to have a coffee shop there. We called it Shagufa. we we would we, we would uh, sell coffee but at the same time songs and uh, dances would go on it's just a picture of what shanti ketan shanti ketan life was uh, like there i am sitting and uh, actually singing and next to me my husband topon he's also at that, that time he hadn't become my husband both of us are singing those are your romancing years <laughs> indira oh. gandhi Indira Nehru actually yeah. enjoying a picnic. She used to dance. Mm -hmm. See this. This, yeah. this also I remember very well. See Nehru ji and Indira ji, both of them are in a Nagar Dola, a mm -hmm. uh, wooden uh, giant wheel. They would, you know, go around in the mela, and we met them. anybody could go up to them and talk to them i of course i have a picture with him i don't think i sent it to you but uh, th that is separate but it, any child anybody could approach him talk to him and he would also uh, you know just mix normally the place was like that the atmosphere this is you know me as a small child i was singing who is i don't remember who, who was there i was singing for somebody i i was often made to sing for people <laughs> remarkable and lovely that you could talk through them that was very nice <laughs> we're coming to the end of this session monidhi of course we could go on and have another session all together but <laughs> i was wondering if uh, shuranjan who's here shuranjan uh, has been very kindly hosting this session for us so thank you shuranjan and uh, subalakshmi from our betak team is also here so would you like to question send some questions or ask monidhi something which she could answer shuranjan are you there can you hear me uh, shongidadi Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. So, yes, uh, uh, hello, hello, Promethe. Uh, great meeting hello. you. Hello. Lovely uh, meeting you. Lovely talking to you too. Unfortunately, my video is not working. But uh, just a question from us. Uh, you know, uh, Probashi Bangalis who are kind of based out uh, here here in the UK. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we 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 hear a lot about the Shantini Ketan culture and the Shantini Ketan lifestyle and everything that that used to be there. Um, is that lifestyle still there and as probashi bangalis uh, if we go back to kolkata uh, shall we still be able to uh, live that lifestyle or at least experience that lifestyle if we go in there today the one 
the one that i was talking talking about the no. one that yes. you're talking about but uh, maybe no. maybe in a modernized version of that no i wouldn't say that because uh, now you have to you know things move on life moves on so uh, now uh, in our time there were a few thousand people living there everybody knew everybody so it was like a, as i said that was like a joint family now at least 6000 uh, students are there so it has expanded like anything it's not possible to know everybody and of course many rules have to be enforced and now things have changed a lot in our mm-hmm. days it was much simpler now the world itself if you look at ourselves even if you have not left kolkata or wherever you are like you ask your parents like the life they led that would be totally different from the life that you are leading now mm-hmm. times change yeah. uh, priorities change values change so we have to accept these changes so that is why it is always so beautiful to reminisce to 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 think about those uh, past bygone days that's very 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 true and thank thank you thank you very much promit it it's it's it also reflects something uh, uh, that was going around social media circles recently that uh, when every man is asked uh, in a later stage of his life what would he or she like to be the final answer is uh, going back to his or her childhood yeah, and, absolutely uh, very true so that, thank and you and the thing you. is you know uh, if i look at myself i've been after leaving shanti niketan i did my college post graduation etc everything in kolkata and then i got busy got married children work then songs career everything i was not uh, i mean i wouldn't be uh, thinking about my school friends anymore now that we are all 70s and you know just completed 70 or about to complete 70 in this age group all of us you know one day you know we all have our whatsapp groups so if one day one person is absent the others will always say that what's wrong with you why weren't why didn't i see you so that has again you know we've gone back to those days so yeah. we talk about our school days and uh, so we uh, of course now we also talk about our grandchildren a lot <laughs> but we also talk about our old old days how we what fun we used to have our games and our music rehearsals and everything the life mm-hmm. yeah there's another question from supa who's not on screen monidhi yes He's yes you were looking tell us about your singing school boikali and how you bring shantiniketan alive to young students now you know i talk too much as you as you you must have gathered by now that i other people i talk so much and i uh, you know uh, yarn so much uh, so many stories and so many anecdotes that people are kind of uh, they they don't get the time or the uh, energy to open their mouth so mo- most of my students tell me that they enjoy these stories so i always tell them these stories of shanti niketan and uh, the programs that i do with them i try to bring in the element of shanti niketan like every year we uh, celebrate the spring festival i always do it open air and uh, it's more or less like uh, and the, the the my students they all sit outside in another student's lawn and there are guests also and many old people like uh, ex students of shanti niketan those who don't dance so much anymore mm-hmm. they are also asked to dance and uh, impromptu they dance and so it's like uh, you know bringing that spirit of shanti niketan and even when i did balmiki pratibha or kalmri gaya those i uh, i made them uh, do it in the opera style like those who uh, acted they sang they sang and acted together mm-hmm. so these are the the ways i bring in shanti niketan and i talk a lot about shanti niketan all the time so they probably they know it by heart the whole thing so on that note we'll end uh, the session today uh, pramita di thank you so much for being with us for telling us about shanti niketan there's much more to talk about but whatever you have said 
will be so informative and so inspiring for our viewers. And I'd ask our viewers to continue sending in your comments and your questions, and I'll send them on to Pramita Di, and maybe she will find the time to answer some of them for you. But for today, thank you so much. With this session, Places and Memories, Shanti Niketan came to us, came alive to us for an hour with you. Thank you, Pramita Di. Thank you very much, Shungita. And uh, anytime if you ask me to talk about my old Shantini Ketan, just feel free to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you, viewers. And from Baitak, uh, a very big thank you to Shuranjun Shom, who has been with us and has hosted these conversations in the past. And today, you've also helped put up all the photographs and make it very illustrative. Thank you once again, Shuranjun. Thank you, Subalakshmi, for being with us in the middle of a working day. But uh, what an inspiring talk this has been. Thank wishing you, Shuranjun and Subalakshmi. Wishing all of you uh, season's greetings. It's the end of the year. And with Christmas and New Year, we'll soon be into 22. And uh, stay well, all of you. Take care. Wish you good health. Wish you happiness. And we'll see you back in the new year. Thank you. Thank you, Shungita. Thank you. Lots of love. Thank you.